Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. This is the CZ457 MTR in 17 HMR. Welcome to Chris Parking Shooting Sports. This is the long-awaited CZ457 MTR, which stands for Match Target Rifle. Now, I'll start out straight away. I will be putting a link on this video somewhere around here, and I have reviewed a lot of the CZ457 range. I think nearly all of them, maybe there's one or two I haven't done, I can't remember. But you'll be able to compare and contrast a lot um, with those compared to this rifle. One fundamental thing I have to tell you is, the action magazine system and trigger are identical between all the 457s regardless of the stock or calibre. They're all compatible with the same mini set so you can interchange barrels, you can go from 22 rimfire, 22 WMR, 17 HMR and you can interchange small and large magazines as well because the spacer system within the stock and within the action enable that. So, Please don't think that the CZ457s vary in anything other than the stocks and the barrels and some of the accessories you get with them. So the MTR, what can I tell you about it? Right, we've got a 525mm long, uh, which is 20.5 inch cold hammer forged barrel. It's 22mm in diameter and this one happens to be in 17 HMR. I would have preferred it in a 2.2 rimfire just because I could have compared and contrasted it a little bit more directly with some of the other rifles I've had, but I've done them in 17s, I've done them in 2.2s, and this is available in both calibers, and you can also have a 16 inch barrel option as well. I think that's only in the 2.2 though. Um, check out the CZ website, I'll put the link on the description um, for that because obviously that's the manufacturer, they will tell you what they think, but some distributors in different countries will actually offer a different model range, which is something important for viewers to remember. Again, going back to the fact that you have mini sets, of course, they can order these in however they want. If they want to order these in with 16 inch 2.2 barrels, they could do. Um, anyway, let's move on. So it's a half inch UNF thread at the front, so you can add a moderator or brake. I put a moderator on it, as you'll see. Beautifully quiet gun, actually, and it's one of the best 17 HMRs I've shot, but more about that in a minute. The stock is oiled walnut, it's got fully free floating barrel and you've got lovely um, uh, knurling on the forend here. The forend is quite large in profile, it's flat bottomed and you get a really good hand grip on that but if you do put it in tripod sticks uh, it will clamp in place, there's no point of impact shift, there's no flexibility in it either. 
looking at the back end of the stock, you've got um, a long flat cheek piece. We've got an underside rise here so you can get your hand on it. There's no recoil, so it's not as if the stock's going to come back and bash you on the back of the hand like some center fires do. Uh, it's got a stud there for a sling, two studs at the front for sling, bipod, whichever you want. And length of pull is 351 millimeters, which is about 13.8 inches. There's a slim rubber recoil pad on the back with one spacer, and you could obviously add more spacers if you want. Now the grip is asymmetric. It's got somewhat of a palm swell on it. Beautifully stippled, and ideal for the right-hander, but that's not to say it's impossible to shoot left-handed with reasonable comfort. It's certainly not as impossible as some guns are. But I would say, yes, it's a right-handed gun predominantly. Now it's marked up here in the, in the stippling, Varmin MTR. That's, you know, a little bit of a, a trick to it. There's another one here, which is all done by laser there match target rifle so you get a nice homogeneous feel throughout the gun now when i first saw this stock it sort of looks a little bit 1970s 1980s prone target rifle and in a, in a way it sort of is but you do get a massive amount of comfort with it and i think if anything this varmint tag here on the match target rifle does describe the rifle So the rifle is 975 millimeters long overall, which is 38 and a half inches. Overall weight is 3,383 grams, which is seven pounds, seven ounces. So when we're talking about the differences in the rifles and what they're gonna be good and used for, the weight has one of the biggest effects on it. Now this one at 3.3, 3.4 kilos is not the heaviest. The LRP is actually the heaviest at 3.9 kilos. But if you compare the heavy barrel or the heavy short barrel Varmin, that's only 2.6 kilos. And of course that makes a superb hunting rifle. But one of the biggest factors is the length and the weight of the stock and the stiffness and rigidity of the stock is one thing that kind of dampens your inputs into the rifle. So, you know, on a light stock, on a light, slightly more flexible rifle, if you've got a little bit of muscle movement, a little bit of twitching going on, yes, you're going to see that more through the sights, whereas on the bigger, heavier gun, it will distribute that less. You won't see it as much on target when you're aiming, and of course it won't affect your group size as much like that. But a lot of that can be compensated for by just being a better shooter. And what I will say about a lot of guns is it's not that the guns are fundamentally more accurate than one another. Some of them are just more complementary to slightly imperfect usage. Scope mounting on this is a 9mm dovetail, so you can use standard air gun or rim fire rings. The LRP, for example, does come with a Picatinny rail on top, but it's only bolted in position. It's nothing actually different fundamentally about the steel action. The action's got two screws at the front, which you can release those. The barrel comes out as a mini set. You can swap the magazines, this, that, and the other. I've done a whole video on that. There's a link in the description or in the part of the CZ457 uh, review chain. As I've used the rifle, the trigger is worn in slightly and it's developed a tiny little bit of creep, but that's no different to what my LRP did and the LRP has been adjusted to compensate for that. And since that time, two years ago now, it hasn't moved anymore. And I think that's great. I think that's fine because CZ recognized that metal metallic components will bed in. They will want tweaking. And once they're done, they're done and you don't notice that. And it does leave you to have a super fine trigger, which gives you a very clean, crisp break very predictable for multi-position shooting, but I think when we come back to this specific rifle, it's less of a hunting, less of a kind of um, improvised position rifle. It's one you're going to maybe set up for more, perhaps shoot prone or rest from a bench. Let me just grab a little bit of a, an additional prop for this review. So this is the LRP. Now, these two rifles are probably going to polarize opinion a little bit because I think a lot of people are going to want the LRP, but the actual uh, MTR is cheaper. The MTR is about £742, whereas the LRP, which is now available in black, is £1,269 current prices. So there is quite a big difference. 
The only fundamental difference in the barrels is that the LRP is fluted and it's also got the match chambered assurance on it, which gives you slightly tighter tolerances on the chambering. Obviously these two can't be directly compared because that's a 2.2LR, this is a 17 HMR. But I've done enough with the CZs and enough with CZ barrels to know that both rifles are equally good. I'm completely reliant on both of them and I find them completely reliable and durable, trustworthy. I have actually got a 17 HMR barrel for this one, which I have used on occasion. Again, you'll see that in one of the videos that I've done before. Other factors you get on the LRP, of course, you do get adjustable cheek piece, adjustable length, you get the butt hook, you get the picatinny on the underside, you get the picatinny on the top there. There's four reviews on that rifle if you want to look at them. So you've seen the group shot, it's all at 100 meters. You've seen the results from the chronograph and it's a consistent, accurate rifle. I'm very happy with it. 17 HMR, I think to be fair, somebody commented actually and said, oh, you didn't like those eight years ago. And I said, no, eight years ago I didn't. There were a few, uh, there were a few ammunition problems in the past, but those seem to have all been sorted now. I've been using Hornady 17 and 20 grain ammunition, both the ballistic tip VMAX and the XTP hollow point. I do have a slight preference for the XTP hollow point, but um, both of them shoot pretty much equivalently well, and I'm quite happy with either of them through this rifle. I didn't have any misfires, didn't have any problems, and the gun is trustworthy. Bot release is on the left side here, so you can pop the bolt out there. It's got a 60 degree lift on it, dual extractor claws, and the ejection is as forceful as you want it to be, because it is a manual ejector, so if you pull the bolt back slowly like that, it'll pop the round out. If you really Track it back, it'll flick the round a long way. That's the joy of a manual ejection system. Trigger is crisp, the trigger guard on the bottom of here is metal, which a lot of people will like. You remove the action from the stock with twin T25 torque screws. The magazine pops out here, that's a five round single column feed mag. Again, if you use the mini sets, you'll get the 22LR magazine, which is slightly shorter, and there's a spacer that goes in there. That all comes with the mini set, and that's one of the great joys of the 457 rifle. Well, there's not really a lot more I can say. The 457 is a rifle I have reviewed pretty much every incarnation of. They've all been superb. Um, some a little bit more preferable than others for certain hunting scenarios. I mean, I absolutely love and adore the lightweight synthetic in either 22LR or 17HMR because that to me is the true hunting tool of the whole range. Likewise, I like the LRP because it does give you that more versatility. It's got a little bit more adjustability on it and it's more of a target oriented thing. But I kind of like the traditional looks of this one. I think that's gonna be very appealing, especially as a US market where you get a lot of people who do like all steel, all walnut, and they don't want too much polymer on a gun. One thing I will add at the end is I have actually shot a few rabbits with this rifle, but I did it in very controlled scenario because as much as a beautiful walnut stock is very nice, they are a little bit more delicate than a synthetic and I certainly didn't want to damage this rifle or even scratch or mark it because it's not my rifle, it's a loaned rifle for a review project. That's why I don't do much hunting with most of the hunting guns because when you get in the heat of the moment, you know, you don't worry about resting a rifle on a, on a, on a stony wall or banging it on a on a fence or something like that, a bit of barbed wire scratching down the stock. That's life, that's hunting, which is why I don't do it much with review guns. But this was totally reliable. I took the hat, took the rabbits I needed it to do. I kind of wish it had night vision on it, but at the end of the day, it's quite a big heavy gun. And personally for hunting, it's not the kind of gun I want to be carrying around with me. I'd much rather go for that varmint synthetic, which is you know half a kilo lighter and much handier either with a long, the short barrel either in 17 or 22, depending on my needs. But this one has been a joy and a pleasure to shoot. And the weight and stability of the stock when you're shooting either from a bench 
or prone has been quite joyful and if it's the rifle you like, you like the looks of and you think it suits your needs, it certainly will not disappoint you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that review. Please like, subscribe, comment, and click the notification bell to keep track of my regular weekly uploads. Remember, your comments are what drive my channel and what gives me the inspiration to carry on and make these review videos for you. If you would go through to the end of the video, there's a link to the 2024 British Shooting Show, and there's a, you can click on the link for tickets to buy that for February next year. Right, thank you for watching. Bye for now.